Hi everyone, Juice, Juice the Knee Up Tano, Tano here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Miley Cyrus album, Endless Summer Vacation. Released just on the cusp of spring, this is the eighth full-length LP from mainstream music chameleon Miss Miley Cyrus, whose artistic evolution seemingly gets more interesting as she progresses from child star to pop star, and then an edgy reboot that led to some growing pains, namely the sexy club pop rap mishaps of bangers, although that, that record did give us a wrecking ball. We also had the psychedelic slop of Dead Pets, a middling attempt at getting back in touch with her country roots on Younger Now, but then Miley played into that interesting transition point between rock and roll and punk music channeling artists such as Joan Jett on Plastic Hearts. So that leads me to wonder, what is the direction of Endless Summer Vacation now? And the answer is kind of a little bit of everything. Showing Miley's drive to adapt to basically any sound or style she can dig her claws into. Of course, to kick things off, we have the big hit Flowers off of this record. Love an album that starts with pretty much the biggest single, where Miley sings about uh, being alone, yes, but being able to love herself better than this person who she has in mind can, or maybe anyone, really. She could buy herself flowers, write her name in the sand. I think it's a pretty cool sentiment for an anti-love song. Her vocals on the track are also pretty good. I think over the years, Miley's voice is showing more and more maturity, and she's really digging into that low rasp that she has at her disposal. But with that being said, I thought the instrumental, especially comparing it to many off of Plastic Hearts, just came across as too bland and polite. Like, I get that it's not a rock song, it's more of a pop track with a slight disco influence to it, but still, it doesn't mean it has to be totally texturally deficient. Meanwhile, the production on the following, Jaded, sounds like a top 40 take on the lazy, watery, guitar-backed indie pop of Mac DeMarco, but maybe a bit more lush on the hook. And yeah, it just comes across like a boneless imitation. Uh, once more, it's really the song and Miley's vocals that steal the show here, especially as she really pushes the volume on the chorus Jaded! Sounding much better than that, I, I promise you. Meanwhile, Rose Colored Lenses is pretty much exactly what it advertises in the title, a vapid Let's Live in Bliss Forever anthem with an awful sax solo at the end. Ultimately, the song doesn't say much, so I don't really retain much of it. Thousand Miles is the record's lone attempt at a country appeal here, and it's not a bad ballad. There are cute turns of phrase within it, like when Miley says that she's not always right, but doesn't have time for what went wrong. The instrumental kind of sounds like a montage of the most sentimental moments from a rom-com. And again, I wish given that this is a more country-centric track, that there was more texture, more twang to it, that the Brandy Carlisle feature uh, took more of the spotlight. It's listenable, but I can't ignore the lost potential of the track as I'm experiencing it. Next, with you, we have a toxic romance ballad in 3-4. Vocally, I would say Miley really sells it on this one with the love, the debauchery. She wants to flip off her exes and have sex under the moon, and she only wants to do it with this uh, one person who she has in mind. The instrumental is dynamic, it's heavy, it really sounds like slow dancing with the baddest bitch at prom. Then we have a spoken word intro on the song Handstand, which, um, no thank you. But the hypnotic synth odyssey to follow? Why not? It's seductive enough, and overall the track kind of sounds like a dream sequence in the middle of the LP. A dream sequence I am very sad to be woken up from uh, with the following track, which has some painfully cringe, sensual fail verses to them, where Miley gets uh, super breathy, super close, and it's kind of uncomfortable. Plus, there's a real clash of aesthetics on this one, too, because there are bits of the instrumental that feel like disco, feel like techno, feel like synth pop, feel like a house anthem with some soaring lead vocals. What does it want to be? It just kind of tries everything and succeeds at nothing. Past this point in the last leg of the record, there is uh, very little to report, honestly. We do have kind of a rock and trap fusion on Muddy Feet featuring Sia, which, again, we have a feature that doesn't play as big of a role as I think it could have. It's really the fusion of styles and Miley's foul language on this track that grabs the most attention. There's Wild Card, which I think has one of the better narratives on the LP, where Miley paints herself as not being dependable in the game of love because, you know, 
she, she's a wild card. She's volatile. But the instrumental absolutely sucks and sounds really overblown most of the time, kind of like something trying to scratch an epic itch off of Lana Del Rey's Born to Die. But Miley fails at kind of achieving that grandiosity similarly because, yes, while the instrumental is huge, it also feels really toothless. The track Island is another low point on the project where it's just too on the nose, not only in terms of the lyrics, but uh, Miley and her collaborators literally try to make the song sound like something from an island or at the very least a bad tourist trap. The closing track Wonder Woman is a highlight, is a great ballad, but at, at this point it's just too little too late. Because for the most part this record is really a snooze with only a handful of memorable moments from it. Which is kind of confusing not only considering that uh, Miley's last record was pretty good, but also she continues to frame herself in her music as this can't be controlled lone wolf, a force to be reckoned with. You can't touch her, she's too hot to handle. And look, in some respects, I don't disagree. Miley is far more authentic and far less rehearsed uh, than a lot of pop artists out there. And that much about her is cool and is admirable, so why does the music continue to sound so safe and predictable, because it is. That daring attitude, that chaos, just doesn't show up in this record at all, instrumentally uh, or even in terms of, like, energy. In that way, this record is actually really safe and uh, kind of measured. A little too measured, honestly, if you ask me. I'm feeling a decent too strong four on this one. Transition. Have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best of the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Miley Cyrus, uh, forever.